Hello, welcome to Red Book Joy. Today I am delighted to announce the past and future readathon 2024. If you're new to the channel, I'm Jack, and if you're not new, welcome back to Spread Book Joy. And today I'm announcing one of my favourite readathons. It was hosted for a long time by my friend Emily at Novel Novels, and then last year she asked me to be one of the co-hosts. And again, I'm a co-host this year, uh, and we are co-hosting this wonderful readathon, which is all about the past and the future. Because as we go from one old year to a new year, we all reflect on what's happened, and we're thinking about the future. So this is a readathon that takes place throughout the month of January. So we're announcing it today, so you've got plenty of time to think about your. TBR if you want to take part and it's one of the easiest and most fun readathons to take part in. So I'm going to tell you about the hosts, I'm going to tell you about the prompts and tell you what I might possibly be reading for it myself. The hosts are myself, Emily from Novel Novels who's one of the original hosts and she used to run it with her friend Gemma who is no longer on booktube but she asked us to co-host with her and my other hosts are my friends from the Book Waffle group. We talk every single day about books and waffle about books and they are Alice from Alice and the Giant Bookshelf, Gemma from Gemma of Books, Charlie from Charlie Book Reads and Danny from Danny's Book World. So we're all hosting throughout the month of January and we'll be having live reading sprints on someone's channel each week. We're not sure whose channels and what days yet but stay tuned. And uh, we did it, when we did it this year in 2023 in January, every Saturday we were just meeting up and chatting and it was just lovely. It was just like hanging out with mates, chatting and reading and then chatting and reading. It was really fun. So you can come along to that. If you do take part and you want to make any announcements on social media, please try and use the hashtag past and future readathon. And um, I'll put all the details in the description box below. And we have a bingo board. So I'm going to put the bingo board up on the screen here so you can see it and you can see all the lovely prompts and then I'm going to talk you through each of the prompts. So as you can see from the bingo board we have some prompts, some are for past, some are some for future and there are two sort of choose your own adventure type ones which um, you can do any of them on the bingo board, you can do them in any order, you can do as many or as little as you like and you can do ones that cross over to multiple prompts if you like. So this is a really relaxed, really easy going readathon. So I'm going to talk through each of them now and talk to you about my possible pile of possibilities for each of these prompts. So number one is read the oldest book on your TBR. And so this doesn't mean like the oldest published book, it means the book that's been on your TBR the longest. So for me, that could be any number of classics. So I've got a ton of classics over there, but I don't know if I'm in the mood in January to get my head around a classic. So I fished out some other oldest books on my TBR and I'll just show you them now, some possibilities. So technically, one of the oldest books on my TBR, it could be any of the books from my childhood that I didn't actually read. And I have got, look how 80s this is. This is an edition of Enid Blyton's um, two adventure books. I don't know how many she wrote. She might have written some more of these, but there's The Island of Adventure and The Castle of Adventure. And I was a mad Enid Blyton fan. In 1985, I would have been eight. <laughs> and my mum got me this for Christmas, 1985 says it 1985 there see and um yeah so I read the first one and then I never read the second one and I can't remember the first one so I'd have to read that as well and sometimes in January don't you just want a children's book so yeah this is a tip but look at this like that's the tv tie-in cover look at those boots how 80s are those boots um but yeah so that's a possibility. Also, on my children's TBR, there is The Walls of Willoughby Chase, but that might come up for another prompt later, so I'll talk about that later. If we're talking non-classics that have been on my TBR for over 20 years, but they are classics in a sense that they're uh, about the classical period, um, then I have got Julian by Gore Vidal, and I know this has been on my shelf for so long because do you see this sticker it says Dylan's so I used to work at Waterstones in Gower Street and when I started walking working there Waterstones had just bought it because I worked for Waterstones I got a transfer there and uh, Waterstones had just bought Dylan's of Gower Street which is what it used to be called before they refurbed the shop in 1998 so that's been on my TBR since 1998 thereabouts. Not far behind it is uh, Marguerite Yourcenar's Memoirs of Hadrian, so lots of historical fiction based on real figures, Roman emperors. And then I had a look at my TBR of kind of recent releases and you know I'm, I'm not so much a new release person these days, I'm more of a backlist reader, but I did have two books I bought, brand new in hardback uh, and then my oldest hardback new releases um, that I have on my shelves and that is, we've got here, uh, Margaret Atwood's The Testaments, which I pre-ordered pre-ordered this book um, and yeah it says here look this is how much I pre-ordered it shortlisted for the booker <laughs> it did win the booker that year and um, then I have 
Early Riser by Jasper Ford. I absolutely love Jasper Ford. I'm going to talk about Jasper Ford in a bit because this could cover another prompt as well. And signed by the author, I couldn't resist. And this was released in 2018, I think. Um, with, this is Early Riser and uh, Jasper Ford does kind of like surreal speculative fiction. I've also got another Jasper Ford book, which might um, come up feature later. Number two, old favourite. Reread an old favourite or read a book by a favourite author. Now, I'm always rereading, but I've got a lot of books I haven't read, so I need to get to them. And I've got a lot of books by favourite authors that I haven't read. Jasper Ford, as previously mentioned, I do have another Jasper Ford book uh, on my Kindle, which is the Const... I think it was the Constant Rabbit. The Something Rabbit by Jasper Ford, which... Yeah, anyway, I'll put a, a, put a picture of it up on the screen. Um, I've got that, I've got, so I've got Jasper Ford. I've also got some Pratchett's to finish, so could this be the year that I finish, finally finish the Discworld series? I've been reading Discworld since I was 13 years old, so um, 30 years, and I have basically read and reread many of them many, many, many times over. I'm always reading a Discworld book generally, and I haven't finished it because the books I've got left to finish, Tiffany Aching, and I wasn't that fussed on the Tiffany Aching series when I first, I read the first one, The Wee Free Men, it was, it was okay, um, but I kind of didn't really get into the Tiffany Aching bit, books. But the very last book is a Tiffany Aching book, and I've been putting off reading the last book for, well, ever since Terry Pratchett died. So I've been putting off reading that book because I feel sad when I've finished it, there'll be no more Discworld to read. But I just need to do it. So I've got A Hatful of Sky by Terry Pratchett, which is the second Tiffany Aching book. Um, and if that is, hopefully, oh, is that Granny Weatherwaxing supposed to be in there? I don't think it doesn't look like Granny, but anyway, could be, who knows. Um, and then I've got Fairy Tale by Stephen King, who is one of my favourite authors. I love Stephen King. Um, don't read him as much these days, and I have not read a new Stephen King book since... Well, I read 11, 22, 63, but other than that, I don't really read much Stephen King since the early 2000s. So fairy tale, though, really appealed to me, so I've got fairy tale to read on my TBR. And then, bucket list. Read a book from your bucket list or that you've always meant to get to. So everyone's got a bookish bucket list, right? Like you've always wanted to read War and Peace, which I have read, by the way, did that, finally, that's ticked off the list. Um, but yeah, so bookish bucket list. I had a look and I'm, I'm deliberately choosing books from my shelves because next year is gonna be reading what I own. <laughs> so um, I've got a few things that are bookish bucket list on my shelves. The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell by Susanna Clarke. I've always wanted to read that. Meditations of Marcus Aurelius. I've started many times and dipped in and out of it during my degree, but never read the whole thing. Mary Reno's Alexander trilogy, starting with The Persian Boy. You can see a kind of classical theme here with some of my books. Cider with Rosie by Laurie Lee. Isn't this lovely uh, 1960s edition that I've got that I found cheap as chips in a local village uh, sale in a local village fate, which was great. <laughs> This could work for a number of prompts as well, which I'll talk about in a moment, but I can carry on with the Sandman series by Neil Gaiman because bookish bucket list is to read the entire, like all the volumes of the Sandman. Editing Jack, I just wanted to say that, and I haven't got my microphone, so forgive me, um, but Walls of Willoughby Chase, I mentioned it earlier, and that could be one of my bucket list books. I've always wanted to read it and I've never read it. So I said I would come back to it and then I didn't, but that's one of my bucket list books as well. And now we come on to some future prompts. Uh, one, new edition. Read a recent edition to the TBR your new, or your newest book. So my newest book is this, The Invention of Hugo Cabret uh, by Brian Selznick, which my brother bought me after watching the film and saying he absolutely loved it and was shocked that I hadn't read the book uh, because he thinks I've read like most children's books. <laughs> and this is a Caldecott medal winner. So yeah, this looks amazing, by the way. Um, it's about a boy who lives in a Paris train station and he's has to solve a mystery and there are clues throughout the book and the book has like lots of different um it's got graphic novel style type stuff like it's got lots of different um sort of structures about it so it says here just to tell you quickly 284 pages of original drawings and combining elements of picture book graphic novel and film brian selznick breaks open the novel form to create an entirely new reading experience so yeah looks beautiful or I could read any of the books that I bought in the uh, summer, which sounds like it's not very recent, but for me, I've not been buying a huge amount of books over the autumn, I've been trying not to. So I've got Days at the Morizaki Bookshop, I've got The Good, The Bad and The Furry, and I had mentioned possibly reading those before the end of the year, but if I don't, then I've got those to think about for past and future. Number two, New Year's resolution. Read a book that gets you off to a good start with a reading goal. Now, any of the books, 
on my TBR shelf, any of the books on my actual shelf, physical books, because my goal is to read off my shelves this year and physical books as much as possible because just, I've just got too many unread physical books. Number three, try something new. Pick a read using a colour wheel. So I've got a spin the wheel colour picker app. I'm going to spin a wheel, spin the wheel, get a colour and pick a book. And I'll put a link to this in the description box below. Spin. Deep purple. I have got a deep purple book. So kind of purple, I've got Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead, which I started and I need to finish. I've got, oh, beautiful, look, Amari and the Great Game, signed by the author. Another pre-order that I haven't read. Then I've also got oh, Nightwatch, The Nightwatch by Sarah Waters. That could count. But my deepest purple looking books are The Little White Horse by Elizabeth is it gouge or gouge? If you know, let me know in the comments. I never know what to, how to pronounce it, but I've had this uh, for some time on my shelf. And then possibly my deepest purple book, one that does appeal to me a lot, is The Wizards of Once by Cressida Cowell, which is the start of a series. Do I want to start another series? What you can hear, if you can hear that meowing, is my cat outside trying to get in because he tries to get out and scratches to get out and you let him out and then he scratches to get in and then he minds to get out. So yeah, he's driving us a bit mad at the moment. Either or prompts. So these ones you can kind of choose for yourself if you want to do them. Uh, you can do them or not do them. Do one, do not do one. Uh, the first one is a series sort out and this is like kind of get you off to a good start with the year which is either continue a series that you've already started or start a new one so that's why I kind of mentioned that when I saw that the Sandman is a series I want to carry on with a series I could finish completely and nice and easily would be Heartstopper or Heartstopper volume four which I had have put in for a book about you know my end of the year tag I did end of the year which probably will be out after this video and I talked already about possibly finishing this in December but if I don't I'll finish it in January um this is probably the likely one should I not get to it in December another series I want to carry on with for sure which is not finished actually because it's um still being published is the Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson but it's so huge and epic. I read the first two books and raced through them. Then I got the third book and didn't get to it and it's just sat on my shelf. So I've got two volumes of Oathbringer to read and the fourth book has since come out. So before I get, before I know it, the fifth book will be out. I think there's supposed to be 10 books in total in this series, which is a lot. I'd like to continue with this at some point, but it's a bit of a chunker and this is only the first part <laughs> of this book because it's in two volumes. Or I could continue with Sandman or I could continue with Discworld. Also, if I do that um, Castle of Adventure Island Adventure Ina Blyton book, that could be finishing off a series technically that I started when I was eight. <laughs> Number two is Book Buddy. Have a friend choose your book. Now, I already did that this morning because I've got a lovely friend, Sally, who's over on Instagram. We haven't buddy read for a while. And I said to her, let's buddy read something in January. I, I filmed my whole TBR shelves and she picked a book. Now she actually picked two and we're gonna read both of them. But the first one we're gonna read in January and that is Sisters of the Lost Marsh by Lucy Strange. So this is my January buddy pick, buddy read book. <laughs> The other book she picked is Back Home by Michelle Magorian, which we might go to if we finish this really quickly, you might go straight into this one. So in the middle of our bingo board, you'll see Moody Monday. Moody Monday is something that we've been doing in the book waffle group where we've been not mood reading enough or picking up a book just because we fancy it. So following our mood. So the first Monday of every month, we've been doing Moody Monday and just picking a book that we fancy reading that we're in the mood for. And um, you've got Moody Monday any Monday in January just pick a book off your shelves that you just think oh, I really fancy reading that whether there's a reread a new read whatever it may be whether you suddenly just have a hankering for reading trashy romance or something just pick it up and start reading it so those are all the prompts and those are my piles of possibilities and you can see how they might cross over as well um many times over and I've been reading very few books in the past few months um I've been just not being able to finish a lot of books, I've been reading a lot of big books. I've not been finishing a lot of books. And that means that I probably will read no more than four or five books in January, which is what kind of what I've been doing most months. Um, six seems to be kind of what I've been managing the last few months. Um, but you can see how any of the books would cross over. It's going to be a very easy casual readathon. We're not going to kill ourselves to fill, fill all the prompts so don't kill yourself if you feel it's too stressful it should be a relaxing fun engaging readathon to finish off some things you're already planning on doing and to start your new reading year with a bang so 
hopefully you'll be joining us. If you are joining us, let me know in the comments if you've got any questions or you just want to know a bit more or you just want to talk about the books I've been talking about, then I'd love to hear from you in the comments. And if you don't know what to say, you can just leave me a time emoji for past and future readathon in the comments as well. And hopefully you'll join us. Bye. And so we've got a hashtag as well if you want to take part. The hashtag is hashtag past and future readathon. Hang on. I've just realised all my prompts are on my phone, which I'm filming on. Eh! <laughs> I'm really not very well organised today. I mean, can you tell it's winter? I'm walking around in the house with a scarf on.